John Fiedler, welcome on our hot chair <laughs> for, your, for your national team interview. Thank you. Uh, John was with uh, the guys that uh, we were interviewing before we want to start uh, from the, your beginning, from the beginning of your rugby journey. Uh, so just tell us a few words, how did, how did it start it for you? Uh, secondary school for me, started secondary school. Um, knew I wasn't good enough to play any kind of football, but really wanted to play sports. And uh, my PE teacher was kind of instrumental in it, it kind of got me into rugby. I was uh, basically said I'm too heavy to be a second row, so pushed me to prop and then the rest is history. Yeah, I went in, second, in secondary school and then went to my local club, which was uh, Wooten Bassett, and kind of developed and grew, grew from there. And when was the moment in that way after this club when you decided that rugby can be like your path? Uh, our coach at Wooten Bassett, Mark David, was 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 amazing. Like he was, how he wanted to play was, it was a small bit of structure, but it made like at that level it made such a difference. And he like he was he, he was a massive part of massive part of my rugby growing up, and he kind of gave me the belief and the way that we played rugby. It kind of suited how I played, and and it kind of got me the, the opportunity to do some trials at some age group stuff and stuff like that and and was fortunate enough to get picked up and played went into Bristol uh, Bristol Rugby Academy and then went on from there and what kept you in rugby like what was in the sport that you stayed in it? Oh, I don't know it's it's, <coughs> it's almost kidding myself that every year I'm, I'm still young that's, 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 that's kind of like it makes that's you feel young. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, no. Like it's like a, 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 I'm a very sociable person. I like being around people, and I like being around people of like similar mindsets and similar kind of humour. And it, with rugby, you get that. It's everyone. Everyone gets on with each other. Everyone wants to like be around each other. It's like it's an infectious environment. And uh, yeah, it's about. It's just after COVID. Just well, just during COVID, I was convinced that that was it I was going to step away from it but then a few things kind of happened and I was like I can't I can't do it just yet so I'm back again <laughs> and you, you were playing in a in a few clubs uh, can you just roughly talk us through my history what, yeah, your well, history how, how it was looking to you know not with, <laughs> with really, really detail, <laughs> you with a lot got of details. Time. <laughs> yeah. um, just get like the most important uh, points of your rugby career and getting to Ognivo of course started out Bristol Bristol Academy was uh, sorry Wooten Bassett and then went to Bristol Academy went to Bath University then went to Newbury then Newbury I went to Cambridge then Cambridge I went to Jersey then Jersey I went to Plymouth, then Plymouth I went to Mosley, then Mosley I went to Chinna, <laughs> then Chinna, then like, then when I was at Chinna when Covid hit, okay. and then we went to, I went to Bromsgrove because that was my local club, and I didn't actually play for Bromsgrove at the time because of Covid, and then got the opportunity to come over and play for Ognevo, and here I am now. And about the Chinna, because I d did some research, uh, and I found that uh, playing in Chinna you were 132 kilos, that's right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like my, my heaviest was when I was at uh, Mosley. I think I was, I was sitting around 145, Whoa. 145 kilos. My heaviest I've ever been was at college, and that was 165. So yeah, I was a, I was a big old cat, <laughs> a big old cat. So you had a big prop then? Yeah, yeah, D difficult to move, but yeah, I didn't do much movement around the pitch. And I'd, like to be fair, that's, again, around COVID was a massive kind of, point in my rugby career like it stepping away from rugby helped in in a while because it made me kind of you didn't have that week in week out kind of environment where you feel like oh I've got to eat this way or I've got to train this way so I'm good for the game on Saturday stepping away from that and not having that like I lost a lot of weight because um, I effectively wanted to be healthier for my my, my family for my daughter which, um, we we're having a baby at the time so I wanted to make sure if I'm 140 kilos, I can't imagine I'm going to be have a long life, are you? So, yeah, that was a big catalyst, and um, yeah, but it also it, then it then it helped with rugby because it was I was like, oh, I can actually move around a bit better. I wish I knew these secrets ten years ago. <laughs> might might have been a little different, but no, it's good. 
you mentioned your family, your your daughter, uh, and I know that it is connected with your with your Polish uh, playing for Poland history. So can you just tell us now how did it started for you to play Poland, uh, and then how you met Claudia? Okay, um, so it was it was I think it's a rugby world advert. Uh, it was said about people with uh, Polish ancestry get in touch with. Uh, gave a contact detail so I thought well, what have I got to lose put put the uh, put the feelers out there didn't hear anything for a little while and forgot about it and then got an email back through and then Dwayne came o Dwayne Lindsay came over and watched me play a game for China and then my first camp was Spower and it was 2019 yeah yeah 2019 yep yeah, and then our first game was Germany in Woods, a difficult game, but it was it was it was good from a selfish point of view because that's when I met Claudia, and then uh, yeah, we I think we met at the end of October, was it? I think it's the end of October, and then by December, kind of decided that we're gonna make a go of things, and she moved across to England, and then it kind of it snowballed pretty quickly, and. Yeah, what we now three, three four years down the line, we've got a little two year old whose birthday's coming up soon, Florence, and yeah, it's been it's been great. It's been I love it. It's, it's amazing. So uh, you you could say that playing for Poland gave you. Some it, it really did. Yeah, no, it, it did. Yeah, no, no. yeah. Like it, it did. It gave me it gave me my family, and like that's that's massive. Like it, family is the most important thing to me. And yeah, if it, if I didn't play for Poland, it certainly wouldn't come around like that for sure. And in terms of sport, what gave you the playing for Poland? How do you mean? Like, what, what gave it to you in a sport-wise and as a player? What, for, what so from my point of view? Yeah, and, um, <clears throat> I, felt, I felt like I still had something to give. I, I felt like, I felt, even though like I was late in the day in terms of uh, taking it up, I, I, I wish I would have been part of the setup earlier, but it just didn't work out that way. And... Um, yeah, I, f I felt like I had something that I didn't like, something unfulfilled that I, that I hadn't quite done yet, and this kind of gave me that opportunity to test myself at a, a different level and to see what a different environment is like, different culture, different different everything. And yeah, it was it was I love it. Like I, I absolutely relish relish the opportunity, and I'm so grateful to still be around here now and to be around this, this group and this environment and a different set of coaches and stuff. Yeah, what was and what what were the emotions when you were had your first first game against Germany? Uh, yeah, it's like I I said to someone I, I don't think I'm an emotional person, but that, 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 that supposedly I can be at times. Um, yeah, it was it was mad. It was it was very surreal. I remember sitting in the change room at um, LKS was I think it was the LKS ground, and. Um, yeah, it it just it just happened so, so quickly, like it was, like it was. Yeah, I felt like yeah, it's difficult to put into words. It's, it's very very emotional. Like, uh, yeah, I can't really say. It's, <laughs> like it happened so quickly, it was all over, and then it's like Christ. I look back on the day now, and with, with great fond memories, but I, it's not one specific thing that happened that I thought I could cherish that moment. But the shirt still hanging on the wall at home so it's a, it's a nice reminder and like I said I always say to Claudia she wants she wants me to take down the shirt or to have it framed so it looks a bit more presentable but I'm like you can't take that down because that's how we met so yeah it's a nice reminder of things so like picking this moment would it be the best moment through all these three years or you'll pick the another one and then another one as your your favorite your best moment in in national team because, like I said, when you, when you're getting older and your 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 career is kind of you, you feel like you're coming towards the end of your career, it's always nice to have that affirmation that, okay, we still see value in you as a player. We still see value as what you can bring to an environment and stuff like that. So, first of all, to get that to be selected, like that that would be probably my favourite moment. But then again, now to still be selected for someone still to think, oh yeah, okay, you, you might be able to do something. You might be able to offer something. Like that's 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 always the nicest kind of feeling you can have because it's you're always worried, especially with like any rugby environment. It's 
or any environment, there's always someone new who can come in and fulfil your role. Like that's that's one thing that rugby's taught me is that yeah, you might be able to offer something one season, but then next season there could be someone who they think fits better or does your job better or does your job and then does more things. So you've got to realise that you're not going to be around for a long time. So you've got to do everything you can to make sure that, like I said, they see value in you. They can see value in the way you play or what you offer or what you bring. So, yeah, that's, yeah. I, like I said, the whole, the whole three years to be in and around the environment and to be considered and to be picked is is my favourite thing about it all, without a shadow of a doubt. And without, like even with playing the teams that I've played for, this this is my proudest achievement to date. And it will be my proudest and my crowning achievement in my rugby career, for sure. But playing for Poland is also a challenge and a sacrifice, yeah? yeah of course. So how you are, how you manage those sacrifices because you spend a lot of, in all this time, all these days you are away from... Yeah, it's... it's It's, it's 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 difficult. So like with with my family, my my mum and my dad. I don't I don't live in England. My dad's got um, some health issues, so he, he's not able to come across. So I've not not seen my family as regularly as as, as I'd have liked to of, which is which is difficult. Like I'm a big family person, um, but yeah, like that that thing aside, like my relationship with Claudia and with Florence, like she. She allows me to fulfill everything that I do, and it's like she's. If it wasn't for her giving me that opportunity, yeah, she she knows that I'm grateful. I'd like to think she does know that I'm grateful. And uh, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here because it's it, it is it is it's a selfish thing. Like I get up in the morning, I've got to go to the gym. She has to look after Florence and I come home and then at the moment now with training being ramped up for things in the evening, I've got to go away and do extra conditioning as well. So again, she's looking after Florence and it's a, it's a lot of time just to kind of be dumped, like dumped and just like, listen, I've got to go, this is it. And it can happen on such a, such a short turnaround, like, like some of the camps, like the notices and stuff like that. But obviously she has a few little gripes and a few little moans, but she's yeah, she's never stopped me doing anything. Like she's she yeah, she's she's been amazing with it all. Same time we can say that you are lucky and all the players here are lucky because you get another family here. Because as I'm observing you here during the camps, you, you are at the moment some kind of, of a family and I know that you are also uh Like you said, the guy who is really socialized, so and you are also sometimes like a leader in that socializing part. Well, that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> so how is it with your team? Is it is it like is it like second family a bit? Yeah, of course, of course it is. You've got lads like in rugby. You've got proxy friends, I like to call it. So friends who you kind of you come into contact. They you're you're kind of around them. So you get on with them and then as soon as you kind of move that away from that environment, you never see them again. You might like not through anyone's fault or for fault of their own, but there's you can have such intense relationships, environments like that, that as soon as you move away from it, it just kind of dissipates and goes away. But with with these guys, there's it's completely different. There's lads who I know that I've made friends for life, especially like some of the Ignevo lads, like really it is. And with them kind of understanding the kind of person I am and the kind of humor I have and how I like to kind of sometimes be a bit of an idiot with things, but in the right place and right time. Like, yeah, it, they kind of allow me to do that. So it's nice. It's, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's being valued. It's being, in whatever way that is, it's being appreciated. That's, yeah, it is, it is. It's another family for sure. And I know that sometimes you are also becoming a judge in this. <laughs> of course, we are not showing the, the backstage no, no. of the, but we can talk about it for a while. Well, it's discipline needs to be needs to be brought in, doesn't it? Standards need to be adhered to. That's the thing. Yeah, if lads don't toe the line, then they know what would happen. So this is like the nice occasions to to also just like uh, build a team, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, of course. I, like so socially, it's it's, imp it's important. Like as as you can see from from this camp and previous camps, when we come here, we're working hard and you're not, the reason why you work hard, it's not because of the reward, it's not because of 
the monetary reward. It's not because of the kit or something like that. It's because you know what you will become and what we will become. And so that's like, that's the main thing. So it's, it's important that when we have the opportunities to kind of uh, decompress, shall we say, and get away, from, get, get away from the camp, have a few, like social, like some social time with each other, it's important that we do that. And yeah, if, if, if sometimes it needs someone there leading the standards and that side of things, and I like to think of myself as a, as a bit of a leader there. And as a judge, you need to also have a perfect haircut. And we heard it <laughs> during also. Braze, is that, is that what it is? <laughs> the films before, who's got the best haircut? <laughs> it was just when you, when you have the time for the barber, if you have trainings, family. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's just perfect, isn't it? Yeah, and the, and the same way, same time, uh, also you have like, you're also your profession, you can say it's a bit Polish because it's like there is a, even the Polish plumber is, we can say, even gen legendary at the moment. So you want to be like a Mario Bros or something when you started or? I'm not, so I'm not, not actually plumbing. I know, I know that now, not now, but in a, uh, in the past you were working. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. When, when I was in England and and then when I kind of came across here, other opportunities arose so I didn't have to do it, so. But the one thing is important is the plumber has to need a the strong chest. And I've heard that this is something that you are doing also. <laughs> I've got no idea. <laughs> I mean, the plumbers in English are stereotypical. Trousers are kind of down and the little crack hanging out at the back. So that was one thing I wanted to make sure that I didn't fall into that stereotype. But no, like I didn't, I, I was, I, I worked with a, with, a, with a company and they were great. They, they looked after me and uh, I learned from a, from a miserable old lad there, but he was, he was, he was good and he, he taught me a lot of things. But like I said, I haven't, I've not really done any plumbing here for, God knows, a good couple of years now. Good couple of years. But coming back to this, uh, to this chest, because I've heard it on the gym. You can skip the leg day, skip everything, but the chest is the most important. I wonder who's told you this. Oh, I can't tell you. I wonder who's told you this. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. The same guy who, is, who, who you, are, you, are, you are laughing at, he's got unproportional... Like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, the old <laughs> Polish <you>. tank. Um, <laughs> for, for me, like, you just need to know what, you, what, what, what gets you through to the weekend. And I don't like legs. It's, it's a, there's there's no exercise that you like. Uh, you, there's no spin you can put on it. There's nothing you can do. Legs is boring. Legs is hard. They're, they're, it's as simple as that. Whereas bench, like, there's something in it for me. It's, no one asks like how much you can squat on a night out today. They ask. I'm like, we bench it. <laughs> so yeah, these are the important things. And you get the energy from that. I've heard from the barbursten and the chicken wraps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We've had to cut them out, unfortunately. It's just, it's a shame they they do these they do these wraps with this the, the weirdest ingredients you'd never think that would go together but my days they put it in a wrap and it's exquisite so we used to get it on a we usually get it um, as a team before we play for Ognevo on a Friday night and I'd, I'll, I'll admit I've uh, snuck away more than one. On a night, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And talking about Barbursten and, and uh, being around, just what are, your, what are your favorite places in Sopot and in Poland in general? I, like, obviously, um, Monte Cassino, like, I, I, I enjoy walking mm -hmm. and uh, trying to get Florence out as much, much as we can do. So, going down to Monte Cassino, walking along Molo, walking along the beachfront is, is always nice. So cycling as well around, around the area there. Uh, I really. Uh, Claudia's father's got an apartment in Krakow, so I, I really love being in and around Krakow. I've, I feel like that that's a that's a lovely city. So yeah, those are the kind of the, the main areas like Sopot in the in the summers. Just a completely different vibe to where what it is now. It's busy, it's, but it's it's good. I love it. It is like the whole place and and Gdansk old town. I, I really like that. I, like no matter what time of the year, I just. I love like the buildings and the architecture there and wandering around you can spend so, a day there and you don't even realize you've done it so yes yeah, it's, it's lovely and now coming back to rugby <laughs> i want to ask you how you because now we are in the moment where we're getting and heading to, to the big challenge 
So how you will sum up the year, the last year with the, with the national team, the whole campaign and the point that we are at the moment? Well, it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's been a massive learning curve the whole year. In the interview we did the other day, I talked about Switzerland being the kind of the point when it was like, OK, let's stand up, we've got something here. And then we've, we've built on that. But now you can see that everything has changed and there's been a massive kind of shift, This, especially after the game against um, Lithuania when we finished up with that. And obviously the adulation, the excitement around that and actually confirming that we've, we've gone up gone up another league, like now it's almost like Chris said, right, the hard work's going to begin now. And we're like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But yeah, really it has, it, like it's like the expectations, the, the what we're doing, we brought in a new um, strength and conditioning coach, Mirek. we work with him over at Nevo, but yeah, he's an encyclopedia of knowledge. If he doesn't know it, it's not worth knowing. And um yeah, he's pushing through our paces. Like, I didn't, I didn't really like if, if you were to ask him what I was doing in the gym when I first came down to Skek, like it would have been you, the, the weights and the the numbers I was pushing was embarrassing. And now with his help, is yeah, they, they they've they've shot up, really shot up, which is which has helped out on the pitch. And like I said, the hard works beginning now but even what we, we, we're one camp down and this is our second camp like you, you can see it's paying off like already like lads already look fitting look fitter moving around easier skill levels are going up either under fatigue and stress and everyone who comes in adds something new to the environment so yeah it's it's, it's we're on the kind of a, a crest of a wave shall we say and then we'll see where that wave takes us Looking, uh, looking at this, uh, what do you think? What you are capable of before in, in this? In as a team, as a team, yeah. Who knows? Like, who, like who knows? I, like, I, I've got my kind of own goals and ambitions, which, which are which are personal. That I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that. I'll, I'll let you know at the end whether or not they they've been achieved. But um, like I said, like we're here now. Like let's let's stand up and show to other people what we as a collective, what we as a as as a team, as a coaching staff, and everyone else know already that like we're a decent side, and like we we, we certainly show that when we when we come in against the games. It, like it's good. last year, you could have said that there was easier games than others. You kind of knew what you're going into, whereas this this time round is a completely different level. So yeah, it's. Uh, I don't. I think we're surprised of a few people. We've surprised plenty of people by being where we are now, but then I think we'll really kind of cement that next year with some of our performances and the way that we'd like to play. Grzesiek Buczek told us that uh, before he will end up with rugby, he wants to play Georgia uh, in the first row. Do you have like you said that you you don't want to talk about the goals, but but would it be the challenge that you would like to? Because we know that we are not in, in the group with them, but uh, but would it be something that that you are thinking that would be nice to to try? I don't know if it'd be nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not nice. Yeah, maybe it's not, not a good word. <laughs> I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if that's the word I'd have chosen. But no, um, yeah, cool. like it. it yeah. I'd want it, like you. You want to be tested. Like that's that's the most important thing in your career. You want to make sure that you've played the best players, you've played the best sides and stuff like that. And this this has given us the opportunity to do that. It's given me the opportunity to do that. So yeah, I don't know if I'd be that like overly keen to play Georgia, but yeah, I'd, anyone, I'd, it'd, be, it'd be enjoyable to play. Obviously, we're going to look after Romania first and foremost and then see what comes after that. At the moment, you're also coaching Scrum in, uh, in Ogniva. Uh, so I think that's going to be like the the path you are going to to go after after the rugby career, yes. so I hope that th this moment is not coming pretty short, <laughs> really soon. But but what do you think? What the highlight should be for you before stopping to be a player? Coming like to what kind of achievements be, do yeah, I want exactly, to do? Yeah. So so this year I've kind of stepped on from just being a scrum coach of Ignevo and now like I 
Carol's that Carol's the head coach there, and uh, now we kind of like work together and trying to adapt the way that um, Ogniva are playing and bringing in different things, like different standards, different environments, different ideas that I've learned from my pl many of clubs I've been at and the many coaches I've been around that I like to think, okay, well, I, I like the way that works as for a player. I like the way this works. So I've kind of molded myself into that kind of coach. Um, for me, like, I just like, it's like the development of, of, of rugby, not just like it in Poland is the, like something that I love being a part of. And it's something that's extremely challenging, but, one thing that is there's such a stark contrast between coaching in England and coaching in Poland is England. It's kind of, I presume it's maybe because of the levels that the national teams at or how the players feel that, I don't know, like the level they've played at. When you're coaching someone, it's very difficult to get your ideas across, whereas Poland is completely different. If you're like, it's it's such a rewarding job. Like if you're saying to someone, listen, I think we should try this. I'd like try looking at this next time you do that. You can see that they, they try to bring it in, they try and do it and straight away it's like, does it work for you yet? Okay, keep it. And for me, that's, that's what I want to do. Like I want to kind of be in and around support. It's given me the opportunity to to test me as a coach and to kind of put different ideas forward and to, to change certain little things. And yeah, I want to want to make us like a, a, a great side. One that's always talked about. One of the top sides of Poland. It's already kind of up there. Now it's just a matter of cementing it and keeping it there. I keep my fingers crossed for for, for first for your player career and the championship. Oh yeah, we don't have to worry about any, anything like that at the moment. Claudia will know when it's. Claudia will, tell Claudia will be the when first one. Yeah, she'll be like, come on now, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're, okay. ta you're taking the, you're okay, so the mick a little bit. If we, want, if we want, you to, you, want you to play longer, we need to talk to Claudia. Exactly. Make sure she's sweet and I'm sweet. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, but like, yeah, like I said, there's, I don't, I don't, I don't like having long-term aims and stuff like that. Like now it's just, it's just taking it all, like all as I, all as I go. And as long as they, as long as someone sees value in me, as long as I can bring something, then I'll still be around. But as we're getting older, and as these sessions are showing me now, like how long can my body keep it up for? So I'll let you know either way. Great, thank you very much, Tom. Sweet, thank you. Great. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs>